Director of the Nurse Midwifery Education Program here, here at East Carolina University College of Nursing. And we are here today to learn how to assess the pregnant abdomen. Um, the first thing that you want to do is wash your hands to be sure that they're clean as well as warm. And I have just done that um, at the sink. Um, and now we're going to come and meet our pregnant model. This is Carol Gwaltney. Um, and Carol, we're so, we're so glad to have you here with Thank us you. today. Um, this is Carol's first baby. And she is 37 weeks pregnant, and we don't know if it's a boy or a girl, so that makes it kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Carol, um, we'll just have you lay back here um, first. And when you lay her back, you want the, the table to be just slightly elevated. If it's up too high, it can um, distract from um, your, your evaluation. And if it's down too low, sometimes it can make mom uncomfortable. You also want her to slightly have her, her legs bent. Um, so that it uh, helps with her back discomfort. All right, so if I could have you just um, raise your shirt here, and I'm going to use a sheet um, just for some privacy here. So I'll pull your pants down just a little bit, cover you with the sheet. And the first thing you want to do is just visualize her abdomen. And there's several things that you want to note. Um, one is if she's got any rashes. Um, there are certain rashes that sometimes can be a problem with pregnancy, um, as well as any striae, which are stretch marks. And Carol has been very blessed not to have any stretch marks that are real obvious anyway. Um, another thing that is very common that women often ask about is this um, brown line that, that shows up right in the middle of the, the tummy. It's called the linea nigra. Um, and that's very normal. It does go away after pregnancy. Sometimes it takes several weeks, but usually when women come back for their six weeks visit, it is gone. Um, you can also look at her abdomen and get an idea of the lie of the baby. Now, the lie is the relationship of the fetal spine to the maternal spine. So there are three lies. You've got a longitudinal lie, which would be where the, the baby's spine is parallel to the mother's spine. Um, and that could be in a breech position like this, or it could be in the cephalic head down position like this. Um, the second type of lie is called oblique, and that's where the baby is turned at an angle. Um, and again, it can be head down, or it can be in the breech oblique lie. And the third type of lie is transverse, and that's where the baby's lying crossways, so the spines are perp perpendicular to each other. And in just looking at her abdomen, since it's got this nice ovoid shape, um, I would say that the baby is in the longitudinal line. Okay, now we're going to assess Leopold's maneuver. Um, and this maneuver is to evaluate where the um, baby's position is. And so you want to see, um, is the baby, the presentation head down, which is cephalic, or is the baby breech? Um, you also want to evaluate um, how, how big the baby is in this maneuver, you can assess that as well. So the first thing you want to do is to lay your hands on her abdomen, and this is where you want to be sure that they're nice and warm. Um, and your hands are on either side of the abdomen, and you walk up her abdomen to see where the fundus is. Now, the fundus is the very top. If you just go straight to the top, sometimes it's a little bit harder to find. So by walking up the sides, that makes it a little bit easier. And so the top of her fundus is right here, and you can kind of see what's in the fundus by putting your fingers like this and moving it around. If it was a head in the fundus, um, it would be very mobile. If you grab the baby's head, you can move the head without moving the body. So you can feel this round, hard shape right here that moves without moving the body. But when I do this, I can feel the, the back actually moving as well. So this is the bottom right here. If you're not real sure, then you take your other hand and see what is presenting in the pelvis. And down here would be the head, and you can feel the hard, the hard ball of the head, and you can actually move it back and forth. And so her baby's bottom is in my left hand here, and the head is down here to the right. And he's kicking me as I'm doing this. Okay. Um, so and with that, you can also kind of assess, assess an estimated um, size of the baby. And, you know, it feels like this baby's actually about six and a half to seven pounds. It's not, it doesn't feel like a, a very big baby, which is nice. <laughs> okay, and then you want to see where's the baby's back and where are the arms and legs. And so you take your hands and place them fairly firmly um, and kind of roll them across her abdomen. And you can feel where the back is at. It's going to be nice and hard. And where the arms and legs are, it's softer. And sometimes you can even feel um, fetal parts as the baby 
might kick you, so you could feel the movement with it, with it, which is certainly good to note. Um, you can also um, feel knobby parts of arms and legs. And so if her baby is in there just like this right now. All right, the, the next part of Leopold's that you want to assess is, has the baby's head dropped into the pelvis yet? And so for that um, part of the maneuver, you have to turn and face her feet. And you put your fingertips just above the pubic bone, and you're checking to see can you get the can you get your fingers in between the pubic bone and the baby's head. And this baby has actually already dipped into the pelvis. I mean, at 36 weeks, that's not uncommon um, because I'm not able to separate the the head from the pubic bone. Um, if I were, then my fingers would just kind of slide together, um, and you can sometimes even lift the the baby's head up. Um, but my fingers are not sliding together here, and um, I can feel that the head has moved down into the pelvis. And so that is the Leopold's, excuse me, the Leopold's maneuver. All right. So another thing that you can do while you're um, evaluating the abdomen is get an estimated um, gestational age of the um, pregnancy. Now, she's obviously farther along than this, but if you couldn't really see the, the pregnancy with her line here, you would, you know, touch and feel. And the, um, a 12-week uterus would just be peaking above the pubic bone, so you just would be able to feel it about one, maybe two finger breaths above the pubic bone here. And then once she's around 16 weeks, the uterus is going to um, be about halfway between the pubic bone and the umbilicus. This is on an average person. Um, so 16 weeks would be right about here. And then 20 weeks is just about to the umbilicus, maybe slightly below. And then 24 is just a finger or two above the umbilicus. And generally, once they hit 36 weeks, the uterus is, has reached the xiphoid process. After 36 weeks, the baby typically will drop down, and um, so it, it can be down below. And so your baby has either already dropped or you're just carrying it low because it is slightly um, below the, the xiphoid process here. Um, as you're visualizing the abdomen, another thing that you might note is if there's any scarring there. Um, sometimes women who have had a cesarean section, um, there will be a low transverse scar or it could be a vertical scar. And certainly if you saw a vertical scar, you would want to go back to your record and assess where the scar is um, in the uterus. Um, another thing that could be is um, women who have had a myomectomy, if they've had a, a fibroid in their past, um, there possibly could be surgery that was done to the uterus, and women who have had myomectomies typically need to have a cesarean, um, cesarean section for their birth. Okay, so now that we have done the Leopold's maneuver, um, we want to get the baby's heartbeat, and now that we know that the back is over here, because we just assessed for that, and we should be able to hear the, the heartbeat over the baby's back. Um, that's usually the easiest place to hear it. And so whether you're using a Doppler or a fetoscope, um, that's where you would want to, to place um, the instrument. So it's always nice if you have warmed gel. Some places do have that. <laughs> this is cold, so I like to warn the patient that the gel is a little bit cold. Um, here's the baby's heartbeat. Okay, so once you get the heartbeat, the monitor, um, certainly you can look and see what it says, but it's also nice to count it. If you're listening to a 12-week or 14-week um, gestation, it's very difficult to count it for very long, so you want to count it for about six seconds and then recount it for another six seconds and just keep getting those numbers. You would add a zero to the end of it, so if you counted 16 in six seconds, um, that would be 160. If you counted 14, that would be 140. And so you can get a range by counting several times um, over several six-second um, segments. As the baby gets bigger, you may be able to count for 15 seconds, but as you, you've noticed, this is a term baby, and he's already, he or she, has already um, moved away, and I have to reposition. So usually counting for 15 seconds is about all that you'll get. And this baby's heart rate is running in the 140s. It's been between 140 and 146. One thing that you can do, too, if there's a mom who's concerned that the baby's not moving around a whole lot, you can sometimes get the baby to move while you're listening to the heart rate, and you'll actually hear the heart rate accelerate. This baby's gone up to 162. So that's a good 
besides, the Navy is doing, doing well in there. Of course, if she was truly concerned about decreased movement, a non-stress test would need to be done. But that's just a little quick assessment that you can do. Okay, so we've gotten the baby's heartbeat. Um, to clean mama off of here. Now we want to measure um, and see how many centimeters this baby is. And generally, the, the baby, once, she, once the baby hits about 20 weeks gestation, will measure about the same in centimeters as she is weeks gestation. So at 20 weeks, they usually measure around 20. And this is plus or minus one or two. Um, at 37, we would think she's about, he or she is about 37 centimeters. However, as the, as the baby grows and gets very close to term, it typically will drop in the pelvis and those numbers will start to drop. So I don't think you're going to measure 37, to be honest with you, by looking at your, at your tummy. Okay, so you want to start with the pubic bone. I'm going to bring your pants down just a little bit lower, but try to keep you covered up here. Okay, so you want to put the zero here on the pubic bone, and sometimes it hurts a little bit when you press on that pubic bone, so try to be gentle there. And then you come right up the middle of the belly, and you want to find where that fundus is again. So once again, you might need to find the side and kind of walk your fingers up, and then take the tape in between your fingers, and I'm measuring 34 centimeters. So it is three centimeters short, but once again, she's 37 weeks. The baby we know is dipping into the pelvis because I was having a little trouble um, getting my fingers in between the pubic bone and the, and the head. Um, and so I would expect it to be a little bit smaller, so that really would not concern me. Uh, but it also tells me this is not a great big, huge baby, which moms <laughs> oftentimes do like to, like to hear. Okay, we have assessed the um, Leopold's maneuver, we have measured the baby, we have listened to the heart rate, and now we're going to have a little fun. Um, this is what we call the art of midwifery. And what I'm going to do is ask mom first, do you mind if I draw a picture of the baby on your belly? Yeah, that would be really nice. Okay, I always like to, to tell moms, because some people don't like to have their bellies drawn on. Um, it usually washes off with the first bath or two, sometimes it takes two or three. Um, but it, but it does wash off. So you, you may need to have mom just kind of bring her thumbs here to hold this down a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is put your hands right here over the baby's head. And then you draw the head right in the, the, the crook of your fingers there. Okay, and then the baby's back assessed was over here on this side and once again I kind of walk my hand up to find where the baby's bottom is and usually hold my hand there so I can get the actual size of the baby here. So there's the back and the baby's bottom. And now we're going to draw the leg, which I have to draw curled up because that's the only way I know how to do it. So we've got the thigh and the lower part of the leg and the foot. And then his arm Babies usually are in this fetal position, curled up like this. And his little hand with his fingers. Be sure you give him five fingers. And then just connect the lines here to draw his tummy and his neck. And then I like to put a little heart right where I heard the heartbeat because once she gets home, she can have family members actually lay their ear over that heart and hear the baby's heartbeat with their ear, which is certainly fun to do. Kind of hard for mama to do it, but other people that you feel close to um, can do that. So you can see the baby's in the cephalic or head down position. His back, arms and legs on the left side. <laughs> 